What's going on Doombots? Tony Skinjili with a special video catered a little bit more towards newer players than anyone else and this video is more or less just discussing uh, characters in the early game that you should avoid investing in. Now some of these characters are here because they're literally terrible throughout the entire game. Some of these characters are here because uh, they don't really matter as far as the uh, early game is concerned or what they do in the early game it isn't really impactful to your growth as a player. Keep in mind the most important thing you can do in the early game is progress to mid, late, and end game so that resources that were once scarce become more available. You don't have many tier 3 and tier 4 ability materials in the first 30 to 60 days of gameplay, but obviously as you are progressing and completing U6, U7, more Greek raids at higher tiers, and of course being better at war, you are obtaining more materials, so it's a little bit easier to spend materials in the end game than it is early. And some of these characters, uh, they don't actually matter without their team. So you'll see some characters that are relatively good within the, the confines of a specific team, a specific comp, or for a very specific thing like U7, Dark Dimension 3, 2, or 1, but until you can work on the entire team, they kind of fall a little lackluster. And I'm just going to go over every single character as quickly as I can. Some of them don't really need much and discuss why. And you'll see that the ordering of these characters, uh, and there are 20 I've served, there's probably a couple more here or there, but you'll get the gist. Uh, is basically on the power investment I have. It doesn't really mean any priority. There's no real rhyme or reason to how they sorted this way other than just the investment. So the first thing I'd like to point out is Carnage. Now, Carnage, you may think, is phenomenal because of how the symbiotes work, which is absolutely correct. But in the uh, early stages of the game, especially if you don't have symbiote Spider-Man or Venom or kind of any of that team, uh, Carnage doesn't do enough on his own. He's very stupid when it comes to AI. He doesn't really do anything you want him to. And he kind of falls off if you don't have a lot of sustain around him where constantly getting characters debuffed or uh, the ability to control what's happening and make sure it continues to happen, when, especially when it comes to his bleed stacks and his ultimate. So an early Carnage, while cool, is definitely not a character that's going to help progress your roster. Of course, if you did happen to get access to symbiote spider-man and venom relatively early yes both of them well then you might make an exception but other than that you're not going to get much out of him uh, and now that i've mentioned that i do want to say one more thing before i go forward uh, a lot of this advice is for players who are at the uh, free-to-play casual or moderate spending level uh, obviously if you're willing to spend a great deal of money to uh, unlock or complete teams early then there, this advice really wouldn't apply to you because if you wanted to say max out an aim a sinister six uh, a fantastic four team you could do that at the cost of your wallet and that's totally reasonable but because you can work on those entire teams and because the money you're spending is saving you time you're technically uh, ahead of the curve anyway so this advice is more catered towards players who are accepting a very limited amount of resources as opposed to a player who uh, would solve that resource problem through spending. Uh, so that said, we're going to move into Scientist Supreme. Now, as you can tell, I have a really strong Scientist Supreme and I use her for a lot of endgame content. That said, one of the biggest issues with Scientist Supreme early is she doesn't do anything that you need in the early game. She's not particularly great in arena on offense or defense. She doesn't really matter so much for raids. Now you can use her, but uh, she is a tech character and there are plenty of better tech characters you can use in those raids. She really only starts to shine in the end game and the late game. And of course, the best place you can use her aside from as a single character in U7, and I wouldn't even bring her into Dark Dimension as she doesn't really do anything that you need in Dark Dimension uh, with the percent chance of a res being potential. But since the res will just end up with that character who died from very full health, dying quicker to an accidental AoE, she's not really great for that. But she is good in a couple of different uh, earlier stage game modes, but only within the confines of her team. So because of that, if you invest early in her with tech gear that is kind of meant for some better characters like Star Ward, Rocket, Minerva, Vision, War Machine, 
you know, you're going to miss out on a lot. Uh, and as the game gets uh, more progressed and as you enter the end stages of the game, it'll become significantly easier to bring her to a reasonable investment level like gear tier 11, 12, 13, etc. You also have a more likely uh, chance of getting higher red stars as time progresses. Uh, and I wouldn't necessarily say that if you did get high red stars on her, she'd be worth farming early. She is relatively difficult to access, and if you've seen my video for the uh, aim team it's itself, it's why they're kind of a mid-game team, and while they are really good on both sides of a war, if they're the first team you have, and you're only working on a team that's good on both sides of a war early, you're probably not progressing too greatly certain costs that's worth what you're investing in you're not getting too many legendaries etc 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 so thanos now this is going to come as a bit of a shock to people because thanos just got a rework and he's part of one of the better teams for early and mid game content in the bkt uh, but ultimately in the early stages of the game he's missing the most important thing which is his ability to feed energy to cosmic characters that usually requires a guaranteed tier 4 investment and in the very early stages of the game there's not many characters that need that energy, let alone himself. He's not a particularly great tank. While he is a mystic character and you could use him, uh, he doesn't do much damage on his own. So unless you really went in on the Black Order team today, or if for some reason uh, you magically got all of the characters for Star-Lord and the BKT as fast as possible, you're not going to get too much value out of Thanos. He's not going to be great on arena defense. I see a lot of teams on my free-to-play account put him on there, and then I just ignore him for the entire fight because, again, he doesn't really do anything. Um, so he's not a great early investment. If you get him, that's great. That's more of a, a burden off your back later as far as when you get to invest in him. But again, don't use your early game limited resources on a character that isn't really progressing you uh, at the point. Wait until you need the characters, then invest in them. Namor, uh, he's literally phenomenal in one game mode, one game mode only. So if you unlock him, uh, it's a waste of mutant gear to put anything into him. Because the earlier you unlock him, as I can tell you for a fact, he doesn't do anything. You're not really winning war fights with just him that are of any consequence. If you're winning a war fight just using Namor or putting Namor on the team, it was probably against a fight you were going to win anyway because like you other players have very limited investment power now obviously if you're fighting up in war namor will be great but he really is an end game character so the earlier you get him don't feel like oh man i'm gonna be amazing in war no you'll just be good at one more attack than you were so not really worth it thing is another one thing is huge because he's a 15 shard unlock in uh, the blitz store and people get him relatively easily he also is among some of the uh, highest damage dealing characters in the game. That said, characters that just do damage uh, aren't among the best characters in the game. Usually those characters also provide some level of utility. So while you may unlock Thing early accidentally, uh, and you may feel free to use him a little bit for climbing a little in arena, he's not actually going to progress compared to people who have a strategy or a game plan. This isn't even including people who are outspending. Thing just doesn't do anything outside of his team, so the earlier you get him, just leave him at the bottom of your roster until you decide it's time to start working on the Fantastic Four or a, a Brawler's team and you can use him as a fifth. That would be a fine option. Uh, the next row has some more interesting characters. We have the Hulk. Uh, you tend to see a lot of people use the Hulk because he unlocks at 4 star through completing achievements. And Hulk is a fine character, but there's not really much that you need from the Hulk. Now, in Arena, he is very easy to work around. As a matter of fact, most people subscribe to the rule of don't kill Hulk until the end because there's more important characters that hurt. And if you try to kill Hulk early, then he starts becoming a threat. So he's really good at taking advantage of people who don't know how to play the game, which might be in and of itself a great reward. But that said, he does take bio gear specifically, and there are way more bio characters in the early stages of the game, like Miles, Mantis, Screw, Symbiote Spider-Man, regular Spider-Man, any of the defenders that are bio. There's just so many characters that can use that gear more that until you can start getting a very wide uh, array of that gear, putting them into Hulk is really just borrowing from Peter to pay Paul, where you're going to gain a little bit of advantage now and then regret that investment uh, at a later date or 
until you can place them on a war defense team and feel like you're getting something out of it. Uh, Heimdall is another example very similar to Carnage and Thing where you can get him early, right? And if by some chance you are working on all of the Asgardians through spending or through luck or RNG, whatever you want to call it, then you're working on Heimdall towards getting Black Bolt. That said, since the entire Asgardian team is not farmable from a very early stage, and since Heimdall is kind of th like Thing in the same conversation where he's a brawler, but outside of his team, he doesn't really add too much to it, an early Heimdall unlock is not really going to progress your roster. Uh, even if you only have a handful of members of the Asgardians, you're like, well, he's an Asgardian. You can feel free to work on him. I mean, getting him to five will pretty much sure up a Black Bolt eventually, but at what cost? At what cost of characters that you could be farming that will not only impact your roster now, but for a longer period of time, like Juggernaut or Drax or Vulture, characters that you can not only work on the entire team early, but that you can... Uh, use those characters for Blitz, War, etc., and see some progress. America Chavez is very similar. She is the last member of every Brawlers team. She's always included because of how her kit works with Brawlers, but until you have a Brawlers team, America Chavez is kind of okay at best. So the earlier you unlock her, again, another very early unlock character, very low shard, she's not going to impact your roster. She'll, she'll maybe be able to do a little bit more damage than average and her basic automatically applying defense down does help in some ways but you're not getting your mileage out of using anything in this character uh, early. Uh, Crossbones is on this list and Crossbones has his own little definition. Now early game Crossbones is absolutely phenomenal but there there comes a point of diminishing returns on Crossbones and that point of diminishing returns is usually uh, Villains 3 um, at the point when you have to keep investing in crossbones, you end up losing a lot of value. You're not going to target farm him. He's not important for anything. He is acceptable as a character to get you through the early stages of the game. So for any of the characters you're using from day one, think of all the characters you get at the beginning of the game, like crossbones and shield medic, punisher, uh, spider-man. You use them until you get better characters, and that's kind of where Crossbone comes in. Until you have better villains to carry the team out, you can just kind of leave Crossbones as the worst member of that team, so you can eventually end up replacing him with a higher impact character. So while you do get him early, in the same way you get characters like Hulk uh, and Wolverine, you don't need to put more into him uh, as far as farming target or putting gear, especially because again, he is tech and there are way better tech characters in the game. Cyclops, I don't know how to say this. Cyclops is nothing without Jean Grey and his X-Men team and uh, pretty much all of the X-Men are unfarmable early. The cool thing is you get to use Cyclops and Wolverine, which means you get to use two under uh, valued and overrated characters on a team. But until you end up with a full version of the team, Cyclops, uh, whether you like him or not as a character, uh, doesn't do anything for your roster. So if you do happen to mega orb a Cyclops or if you played around and got him from a blitz or whatever the event was, great. But any investment you put in him is even that pack that I keep seeing going around where you can get a four, three or four star Cyclops from it. It's not going to matter. That team is incomplete without Phoenix. It's the same as using any team without their legendary, like the Brotherhood. They're adequate, but they're not really doing much for you. They're basically just a blitz team and, and investing in just a blitz team is not really helping you much in anything you always want to invest in characters that are good uh, in multiple game modes or at least one major game mode and then as a result of it end up with a pretty uh, relevant blitz team uh, moving to the next row you see a handful of characters that uh, make a little bit more sense now korath um, doesn't do anything now he may be a very specific uh, counter to something in the future we don't know that yet but if he is how close to the future are you that you need to worry about Korath he is an okay damage dealer early just like crossbones and the villain character he's not bad but what he adds to your roster he doesn't unlock anybody he can't help you with Nick Fury he's farmable on a node which means that you have to choose to stop working on other node farmable characters or gear to work on him if you end up with an unlock of korath early he's a little bit better than some of the garbage minions you might use for villains campaign but 
again tech character really hard to spend the investment uh, ant-man completely useless uh, one of my favorite kits in the game but he just doesn't have any amount of damage to back it up so when it comes to ant-man if you unlock him just leave him exactly where he is he won't help cable Cable is one of the more utility characters. People tend to use Cable as the fifth on a lot of teams because he adds turn meter and has some turn manipulation, but he doesn't do enough damage uh, for a blaster for him to be particularly great. He's actually a little bit more tanky than most blasters, but he won't help your uh, roster grow in any meaningful way. Uh, he's a mutant, and since there's about four or five mutants that are worth gearing up uh, early game, especially as you're working towards both the Phoenix unlock and of course the Magneto unlock, it's really hard to justify investment in Cable early now. Uh, later on, as you go on, you can start target farming more mutant gear and opening more raid orbs, you'll probably be okay. Uh, and in the same conversation is Deadpool. I know we all love Deadpool. Deadpool is a really cool character. Everybody loves Deadpool. Mm, yeah, except I guess the guys who banned Deadpool the first pass of the movie, but I digress. Deadpool isn't good. Deadpool is a guaranteed minion, basically. He's a brawler character, because you need another brawler on the team. Or uh, you have a storm, and you want that to make more sense to use her because you don't have any X-Men. So you put storm with X-Force and X-Men characters, that kind of thing. Deadpool is a perennial uh, Blitz character. Uh, he doesn't actually add anything to your uh, roster. He doesn't help you with anything. There's nothing he's great at uh, for gameplay. There's no content where you're like, man, if only I had a Deadpool. It doesn't come up. I'm telling you that as someone who's done all of the content and it just never matters. The only Deadpools you ever end up fearing are the Deadpools that are overpowered like in Dark Dimension 2 or 3 because they're doing damage that your Deadpool never could because they have fake made up numbers. So while he is a phenomenal character that's well loved in the community, with the exception of the upcoming X-Force characters, um, as of right now, Deadpool just isn't worth it. And again, even if the X-Force characters makes this team absolutely positively phenomenal, uh, which I believe is what, Domino, X-23, and I always forget who the last one is, Negasonic? That's weird. Whatever. If it's those characters, that's great, but unless they're an early game farmable team, what will it matter? It's still not worth investing in early. It'll just be another war defense team or war offense team that you can work on at your leisure once you've accomplished all of the tasks that you need to to grow. Wolverine is completely terrible. I'm not going into here. Let me just tell you one thing and one thing only. When you unlock Wolverine, do not put him on your arena defense. It is a guaranteed loss. You will lose that fight. Do not invest in him. Basically, people hunt down Wolverines because they're not good. Because they're never good. The only time I would ever fear a Wolverine is if there was a Phoenix on there and a Cyclops because then he might do extra damage. But really, I'm just afraid of the Phoenix. Wolverine is not a good character. You get him for free. That's all I gotta say about that. Electra's in the same conversation as Crossbones. Um, she does have a little bit more value in that you can use her to progress in the uh, hand-specific flash event for ability, I'm sorry, gear material, specifically ABCs. But uh, there's a lot of hand characters, and some of them are important for unlocking Phoenix. So while she is an option on that team, she's not good. She doesn't do a lot of damage. Her focus is terrible, so she never actually dispels when she's supposed to. Use her in the early game and replace her as fast as you can. Same conversation goes with Bullseye. Yes, he was reworked. Yes, he works with the mercenaries. Are you working on the mercenaries early? Sure, you might get a little bit, but if you don't have Taskmaster... All you're doing is working on worse characters in general that you could accomplish that task with uh, Killmonger, Korath, Deadpool, Bullseye. These are characters that do have value, but not so far as you would immediately work on them. Uh, they do have a little bit more than some of the other characters because they are worth gold, so if you want to work on stars on them with your extra energy, uh, no one could really fault you for that. The biggest problem with uh, Bullseye and Korath is they are node farmable, so that is energy. Um, that's up to you and how you want to spend your energy, but Deadpool does take arena credits. Arena credits are incredibly scarce. However many stars you get on him aren't worth it, and it's actually a little bit easier to farm the better or the best 
mercenaries in the game, which are, of course, Merc Lieutenant and Merc Riot Guard, and the rest of the characters just kind of fall in place as you go. Uh, rescue is terrible. Um, she's the worst part of any team that isn't power armor. Uh, she is incredibly, incredibly useless. Uh, the earlier she is, unless you do have a power armor team, she won't really do anything for you. I really don't have anything else to say. You're going to get her for free accidentally from opening Blitz Orbs, and uh, basically you're not going to use her until you decide it's time to start working on the power armor team, which means the three-star unlock of Iron Man, uh, War Machine, and Falcon, Falcon of which is not early farmable to my knowledge. Uh, Vision is very not early farmable, and even Ironheart, who's coming out soon, is not going to make too much of a difference, so sorry, Rescue. Don't work on her. Uh, Nebula uh, was just added to this game, apparently. No. Uh, Nebula is terrible. Uh, nothing she does matters. At no point will she improve your growth. Uh, nothing at all you put in her will be worth it. And on top of it all, she's tech. So now you have to put tech gear into Nebula that could go into literally any of the characters above her on this list that are tech. Not worth it. And uh, Ravager Stitcher is more of a uh, representation of... Uh, minions in general uh, with very few exceptions early game minions uh, especially if they don't unlock someone or progress a specific team's path don't do much for you now shield unlocks Iron Man and they're a relatively good early team they also breed into a better team uh, when you unlock Nick Fury Kree unlock Nick Fury and are a relatively decent war team on both sides. They're also necessary for Gamma Raids. They're an acceptable team. Um, hand, you need them for a Flash event, but you're going to get there eventually anyway, right? What are you going to lose out to get a one stage ahead in the Flash event? A lot of people tend to say that, well, the faster you get through all of the Flash events or you know, if you don't start with Defenders, how are you going to get to the 7-star event? It's like the same way you're going to get to the 7-star Merc event. And I don't see anybody immediately 7-starring all their Mercs just to get more gold because that gold's not going to matter to them if they're not, you know, 100%ing U6 all the time on their own accord, not by being carried or anything. So uh, in, in a perfect world, uh, these characters would come more freely to you, but a lot of the minions don't really matter too much. Uh, Ravager Stitcher does have the unique ability of unlocking Star-Lord, but again, he's in a store that's really hard to target farm characters early game, which is the raid store. Uh, and if you were, you'd probably want to be target farming high impact characters like Rocket or I guess War Machine, Sabretooth. Uh, not Ravager Stitcher, <laughs> you know? Uh, so all, all those characters, while they do have some value, and all these characters have some value, it's about when they have value and for a lot of players these characters may appear to have value in the early game because they're new they got them it's interesting but ultimately if you leave these guys at level one completely uninvested in until such a time as you have extra resources or don't need to work on anybody else or are shifting to something or the game changes and now we have a full x-force team or a full mercenary team uh, which gave Bullseye a little bit more value. You then, instead of uh, target farming the characters because you're bored, you can then make that an option you have, especially as you unlock and get more random character shards from premiums, basics, Greek raid orbs, etc. So hopefully this helps you guys in the early stages of the game. Now, I know I'm going to get a lot of comments in here saying, well, I started the game with so-and-so and I'm doing great. And that's absolutely wonderful. I'm very happy. A lot of this advice is catered to uh, the mass majority of players, especially newer players who may not know that just because they get a character uh, doesn't mean that every character is created equal and they don't necessarily know what the responsibility of endgame is. Like, What is the path? Is it bring every character up to the max level? I wish it was, but unfortunately this game is uh, too bogged down in resources. Uh, and it's too expensive monetarily to really assume most of the players in this game would consider tier 4 a lot of abilities or easily getting 7 stars on some of these characters or, or being able to work on them and still uh, make meaningful strides in their uh, both their alliance and in their personal growth towards hitting whatever goals they have to reach the end game. So 
Uh, comment below and let me know if any of these characters are really standing out for you, and more importantly, why. Why is your Thanos doing well? Is it because you bought the Black Order? Uh, is it because you happen to unlock him at four red stars and four star and he's just outshining people? Uh, is your America Chavez the fifth on a Brawlers team you're using because you have CM and Ms. Marvel? Well, comment below and let me know exactly what some of these characters are doing for you, uh, especially if you're using them in Arena. That's something I'm always interested in to see how much value you're getting in your arena defense or offense. Uh, offense in arena is always a little bit easier, I think, because you have full control, whereas on defense, you know, you only get to place five characters and your opponents basically can pick from their entire roster on who to beat, but depends on how much investments. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching, guys. Have a good night. Have a great day. I've been Tony Scangeli, and I'll catch you later.